This is Hashtag Finance, presented to you by the Canadian Securities Exchange, the exchange for entrepreneurs, with your host, Barrington Miller. Welcome to Mining Monday. Uh, this is a segment where we feature at the Canadian Securities Exchange a mining issuer, um, and today we are here with Idaho Champion and uh, Jonathan Buick. How are you doing today? Doing very well. Doing very well. Uh, you are the president and CEO um, of one of the cooler names, cooler logos, and when it just comes to names, like Idaho Champion, it's sort of like, uh, I, I don't know, it's just it, everything about it just screams cool, that and your ticker symbol, um, I-T-K-O, and if you don't know what the T-K-O is, they'll Technical tell you. Technical baby. <laughs> nice Idaho. So it's, let's... Uh, it's, it's, it's a great place to be, uh, great state, uh, great governor, uh, open for business. They kept, through the COVID pandemic, they kept mining and this exploration as essential services. So we were very fortunate, able to have our team busy. We did some staking, we did four acquisitions. Uh, we're very busy. Uh, we had our crews in the field right now. We're about to mobilize a second crew. Uh, but Idaho has been a, started to catch fire we, you know, Integra sold Lamac to anywhere in the world. They came in and bought the Delamar in Idaho. It's had great success from Revival. They just announced their PEA. New funding coming in. We just did a bot deal. Started out for three and a half million, ended up taking just over eight million. I had huge interest and new shareholders coming through. Well, that's and really great, good. Great repeat really investors. Our, our shareholder base has been fantastic. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're really happy with where we are in, in, in terms of jurisdiction, but also uh, the ability to, to uh, move move projects forward and, and have good community support. How did you get started sort of with this company or perhaps maybe even a little further back in the business? Sure. Uh, my, my background is uh, finance, uh, banker by, by background, and, and then uh, went and got my own broker license and, and was doing raises for oil and gas and hard rock mining. I have an advisory firm that I've handed the reins over to my partner called Harp Capital. We were working and bringing in strategic capital out of Korea and Japan typically later stage projects. And between 2011 and 2016, we had seven transactions that were at board approval and all seven for different reasons were turned down by the client, which was our issue, not the big three oh. conglomerate. Came back, sat down with our, one of my lawyers and, and my team and said, look, we're too vulnerable to the yes or no as the middleman. Uh, it's time for us to go get the assets and we control the, the yes or no. So I've got a geologic team I've got a geologist in Sudbury, another one in Vancouver, another one in Denver, uh, a geologic engineer in, 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 uh, in Sydney, Australia. My partner is a metallurgical engineer. Started looking at projects globally and I just kept putting different parameters on it. So I wanted to look at jurisdiction, language, time zone, doing business in Korean Japan. I, I've, I now work a 24 hour clock for the last 15 years and doing Skype and, and, and now Zoom calls in the middle of the night uh, just to be on their schedule as opposed to ours. Right. Uh, and we just kept narrowing the scope. I had raised money for a couple of Idaho stories, uh, like the state. I reached out to some people there and with our chairman. He had already been in conversations with a couple of different projects. Our flagship project at the time was called The Banner. It still is our, one of our flagships, but we now have two. Fortunate to have two great projects. Uh, the Banner was a project owned by the same family since 1896. So what we'd do is we'd be looking at projects and I'd, we'd have our geos who weren't attached to that project give their opinions. And what okay. got us excited about Elk City is it sits in a structure called the Grande Shear Zone. Uh, and it's got a historic production across that structure uh, for over 100 miles. And so we, we knew we were in a cooled system. Banner had been controlled by the same family since 1896. So we went and bought that project. Uh, paid cash, bought it for half a million U.S. We didn't even have Idaho Champion established. We, we put the company together. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get to those details later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we uh, we raised the money. Uh, well, we did the money ourselves for the the uh, the first two phases of financing, uh, and then we staked our second gold project called the Champagne, which is a past producer brownfield. Uh, and then we went and did deals with different families there this this spring. So we bought the data from Kinross, who had bought Bima. We didn't. We knew there was. A reason to want the asset but we didn't understand everything and so we, we negotiated back and forth with Ken Ross we bought that during PDAC of this year and as soon as we got the data we immediately started a bigger land positioning uh, we felt it was a camp not a project we now have 10 square miles one of the projects we bought from a family they'd had the ground since 1860 so older than Canada as a country this family's had that ground and 
it, I'm wanna, I want to I want to jump in and sure. and interrupt uh, simply because there's people who hopefully will be watching and listening. Uh, what's it like negotiating with a family that's had, I guess, properties or rights or claims um, for hundreds of years? What's that? What's that process like? I have no I have no idea. I, I'm a, I'm a touch feel guy, and yeah. I, I, so I'm, I I like looking the, the the whites of the eyes of my shareholders at least once a quarter, talking to them getting getting a chance to know them and it was weird because my first conversation with this family was a video call right. uh, but not everybody was on video and, and uh, the next call was just a, a, a conference call where I had three generations of family and so they actually had six different phones in the house and each one of the kids and grandkids were in bedrooms and I was dealing with the matriarch and she was 79 and her sister was 71 and they talked about when they were little girls growing up at the champagne mine there was 400 people that lived off of the mine and her, their mother was the cook and their grandmother was the cook. Wow. And when they were little girls, they used to play marbles with native silver at the silver horn mine, which is part of our land package. So they were regaling us with stories. It was myself and uh, I have an Idaho based uh, director named Greg Schiffer. So Greg and I were on the phone and we ended up just hitting it off. And I said, you know, I can't wait till COVID's done so I can come and visit, you know, we're travel restrictions between countries. They said, oh, we'd love you to come. I said, my son's really engaged. He wants to come and see the project. And they said, oh, well, we have a dirt track behind our house. You can come and we, we got, he can drive in the, with the dirt track and uh, we'll want you to come. And so we just finding common ground. And, and it's, it's, for us, it was important, even at, at Banner, uh, like we, we, we tried to hire as many locals as we could. So at the drill program, this first ever modern exploration at Banner in 2018, out of the 29 that were part of the program, either third parties or our, our own people, we had 19 were from the state of Idaho. The lab we used was an Idaho lab. Our heavy equipment right. operator was from Elk City. We bought these in Elk City. So the more you can do community wise, I think speaks volumes. And because of how we treated uh, the, the family at Banner and then the community in Elk City, we've had a bunch of other families that knocking on the door, hey, you know, we heard about that deal. We have some ground ourselves. So it's, it's, it's about respect at the end of the day. Wow, these are these are somewhat old school business lessons that you know are are timeless. It's you know meeting somebody, yeah. seeing them, saying hello, finding common ground, being respectful, thinking globally, acting locally. Yeah, well, um, it's funny when we we talked about a, a, a deal because some of it was was patent ground, some of it was unpatented. So with the two sisters, so they go like. Well, what type of deal would you like? And they said, we'll make us an offer. So I made an offer. Well, they said, well, when Bema did a deal with us in 1988, they offered us more than what you're offering us now today. I'm like, well, I, I don't know what the terms of the deal were. What were their terms? So they told me the terms. I said, we'll match that. We'll gladly do that. And they were happy about that. I said, look, we'll even add a little bit. So we did a, a lease option with them. So we were yearly payment. We gave them stock. They had never had stock. They were really excited about getting some stock. And then we did different. They said, our only condition is we don't want to be the underlying owner if you make a production decision. We don't want to be involved in anything tied to actual mining operations. No problem. So we staggered different uh, payments to over different time periods of the lease option so that they would actually be able to exit before we made that mining decision because they just didn't want to be a part of a mining operation as a family. Like, no problem. We can, we can do that. And so understanding what they were looking for, that they now have – three legal boxes filled with old historic reports that are geos who are actually landed in Arco, which is about 25 miles from where they live. Uh, and our project's just three miles outside Arco. Uh, they're going to drive by and pick up the boxes. They said, look, we don't, we didn't have the ability to copy them. If you can copy them and bring them back, we want the originals. And it's all old reports and handwritten things from when it was in production. So little treasure chests that you we're about to find out what's there in terms of how they approach things versus modern exploration. Wow, that's uh, <clears throat> I really really like that. Where where are you right now? Just I'm Toronto. I'm I'm, I'm Midtown Toronto. Yeah. Okay. So I, uh, I put a backdrop up because I watched a couple of your videos and I was like, oh my, I'm, I'm so unprepared. <laughs> like when we originally that the, the call was earlier today, I was scrambling to try to find a backdrop and I didn't have a green sheet or I, I, so my my son goes, oh, I can fix that for you. And then he I said I I need the logo and I need the ticker symbol. So he put the ticker symbol. I said the ticker symbol needs to be green. He says, why? I go because I'm superstitious. Green means the stock's going up. I don't want a red ticker ever. No. Red is no. bad. Green is good. <laughs> no, you do not. And, yeah. uh, so no, hopefully it shows, be, shows behind me. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, uh, it's showing to, when you look directly, it's, uh, it, it's showing on your right. Um, 
what was I going to say? Uh, let's let's talk about your your team because sure. nobody does it alone. No. Yeah, and they they are our lifeblood. Uh, so we've got a board. It was a split between U.S. We had a new announced a new director yesterday. So I've got a, a, our chairman of the board is Bruce Reed, who's a geo by background MBA, uh, Bay, a Bay Street uh, banker and research analyst for a long time, and then went over to the issuer side. I've got Paul Fornazari, who's a, a senior partner at Faskins. He's a securities lawyer whose job is to keep us out of trouble. Uh, and he led the drive through the, the back paperwork side of a prospectus offering and, and, and bought deal. Uh, and I can go into some of those details in a little bit. And then I have Greg Schifrin, who's based in Sandpoint, Idaho. He's a U.S. citizen geologist, been in the capital markets as well. So he's technical and capital markets savvy. And for the last seven months, he's been my right hand as we've negotiated with the different families. And he's great with dealing with the different agencies and government people within the state of Idaho. And uh, couldn't imagine having gotten here without him. And our newest appointment is a, a gentleman named Patrick Highsmith. He's Denver-based. Jackie just came off of a, a stint with Fortescue in Australia, so he's just moved back to Denver. He's a geo by background. I met Patrick when he was CEO of Lithium One, and I brought in a Korean consortium into his project at that time before they got taken up by Galaxy. He's got a huge Rolodex on the capital markets and technical side, and what we've actually established and we're doing and about to roll out is between Greg's relationships and, 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 and Patrick's, We've got a bunch of gray-haired old seasoned geos that each have different skill sets, whether it's an organic geologist or a, a, a epithermal or a structural, that we're bringing them out a week at a time to spend with our young geologic team who've already had Champagne, and they're going to put boots on the ground, come back, they're going to do some mapping for us, they're going to write some reports for us just to help us understand what we have, because Champagne has never seen our fingerprints on it. It's a past producer, it's a brownfield, we know there's ounces that have been left. How many have been left and how many have been mined? We, we need to determine that. That's what we're going to start drilling with. But because of the bigger land package, and if people are listening, they go to the website, they'll see the presentation. We have a, a slide there where it shows our original land package of Champagne and then the additional ground that we staked. But when I looked at the map that my geos gave me after we got the data from Kinross, it looked like a West African gold project, right? There's all these different pits and, and old historic mines. It's like you have all these artisanal miners that surface and you have a big gold company come in and deliver three to five million ounces of gold. So I looked at that map and we don't have enough ground. Like there's all these, I, the, the one gentleman who sold us package ground, he's 79. He asked he's going to come out for, for the month of August into you know, the field with us. He takes, he would come out a month every year. He wants, he goes, well, I want to come and show you what I know. And he oh. said, you know, if you got a pit, those old timers, if it wasn't a half ounce of gold or four ounces of silver, they wouldn't work there. He goes, they didn't mind waste rock. They mind ore. So if you've got a pit, you got to, you got to sample that. you got to drill that. So like being able to tap into that guy's knowledge and, and, and understanding of the workings and, and bringing in all our, our gray beards to, to, to support is, is phenomenal. We have a senior consulting geologist named Jim Boff and he went 19 for 19 over Elk City at the banner. You know, we got wow. a discovery zone. And we got 2.7 kilometers to strike to the north. Like we, we're, we're sitting on some pretty special ground. Now, uh, can you give a definition of what brownfields are? Brownfields is a past producing asset. So there should be some infrastructure around, but also an, a, a, an understanding of metal, metallurgical uh, recoveries, but also uh, the mining. For me, a brownfield, it was a mining operation of size, not you know a little artisanal guy drove it and added in and said, oh yeah, this is a past producer. <laughs> like uh, Bima produced 25,000 ounces a year for three years. Uh, that's, that's a brownfield. Right. Uh, so us to come in and, and get the, the knowledge that they, they, they used as, in part of, as part of their operation through the historic reports. We've spoken to four of the team that were a part of them as a producer and how they drilled out in a sub $250 gold price and how they, they weren't allowed to do exploration. They had to stay with where they were. And they, once they got out of the, the oxides, they, they turned the drill off. So that we've got two of those guys coming to the site to share their knowledge. So a Brownfield is a past producing operation where, you know, you can get a permit where for, for me as a, I look at this as an investor first and foremost, and I'm second largest shareholder. This is a, a wealth creating opportunity for us and our partners are, are my shareholders and my partners. I've chosen to be locked up. I've agreed to a three-year lockup. So the advantage my partners have is liquidity. But that's, again, we, you have to respect your investors the same way you invest and respect the communities you work in. And so I think that's a part of what makes us different and unique as well. It's a brand new, brand new company. It's not regurgitated assets at Banner. That was a, a new discovery. Had never seen modern exploration. And then we picked up Champagne, which is a past producer. 
with a lot of knowledge around that and understanding on that, but it's still untapped. You know, that, that pit it was a part of a patented land package. It was 89 acres. We, we control that, but we've okay. also got 10 square miles around that of geologic upside. And, that, and that's going to be a methodical approach. And, 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 and we're already underway with that. Now, uh, for the future, are you, is there anywhere else that you're looking at? Um, whether you're doing it with Idaho champion or, <laughs> or elsewhere. Uh, I'm a hundred percent committed to Idaho champion. I don't, I'm not allowing myself to be distracted by anything other than my, my kids. Um, and with, with being at home, it, it's different than it was before. We'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We can, uh, uh, but, we but can relate. Good, a good distraction. Um, Idaho is in our name and it, it's a part of our, our, our DNA. Uh, in addition to the CSE listing, we've applied for an over-the-counter. We anticipate being dual listed in, into the o OTCQB by Labor Day. Uh, oh, nice. our, our, for logos and branding, we're red, white, and blue. You know, we got a little flag in our logo. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're proud to be in Idaho. And we think that there's a lot, enough opportunity in Idaho to not have to leave the state. Uh, since we closed our financing last week, I've had three different families approach me with other projects in Idaho in the, in the same postal codes as where we already are with our projects. So we wouldn't have to split our teams up. We'd be able to deploy from the same base. We haven't done anything with those, but we're going to continue to see that. Nevada is considered the best jurisdiction in the world uh, for, for, for mining. Idaho sits north of Nevada. It's a man-made border. The geology doesn't stop at the Nevada-Idaho border. So we're pretty right. confident in where we are geologically. Uh, Idaho is now ranked eighth by the Fraser Institute in the world, third in North America. Uh, that's tremendous. It's better than any, any province in Canada now for, for being recognized as a place to do business. And you've got a governor and the previous governor that have flown into Vancouver, Chicago, New York, Toronto as a part of Idaho mining conferences and as keynote speakers saying, look, we're open for business. We want to support this. They're looking for job creation. And so to have that, I can't imagine the premier of any province other than probably Saskatchewan or Alberta flying to the U.S. say, come to us and we're open for business. Like, I, mean, I know Premier Brad Wall in Saskatchewan's a great champion, pardon the pun, champion doing that, but I can't imagine the other, you know, the other, the other premiers making that same wow. commitment. That's, it's a big commitment. Yeah, and that's says something, for, says something for a jurisdiction. Well, having that, having that, uh, having that support as well um, is, is great for business. Let's, let's talk about the price of gold. Okay. It's up, up and away. It is literally going. Is this, is this the one? Is this the one that the gold bugs have been saying and talking about for years and years and years? Um, it's been a nuclear winter for our industry for a decade. Yeah. So to to have been a part and, and, and suffered the, the challenges of that, the pool of capital that's been available to us is, I used to joke around, it, we used to have sort of the six groups that mattered that you would fund your first two tranches within three square blocks on Bay Street, and then you would start to spread it out. Well, they, those don't exist anymore. Like if it hadn't been for Eric Sprott over the last three years, nobody was writing checks. And he was a one man wrecking crew with his checkbook and thank God for Eric. But the traditional sources of capital don't exist anymore. It's a turtle pool for capital. Now we're starting to see the generalist and, and, and retail come in, but we haven't even really seen the institutions come in to, to actually bankroll the projects. Now we've seen a lot of funding, but it's been in the last six months. Gold price itself, I'm not, I'm not a gold price forecaster. I'll tell you, there's a lot of projects that make sense at a lot lower prices of gold. And so there's gonna be, I think there's gonna be a typical market where you're gonna see mediocre assets get taken out because at you know, $2,000 gold or $2,500 gold or $3,000 gold, that, those numbers make sense, but it still needs to make sense at much cheaper prices. Right. And that's what we focus on for our projects is can our project make sense at $1,200 gold? Can it make sense at $1,100 gold? And we're in an oxides, easy mining, certainly in comparison to other methods or, or styles of deposit. So we're close to surface. We've got good recoveries already in the sampling we've been doing on, on our network. Our, our projects stand the test, even though the early stage and new discoveries, just based on the style of geology that in the, in the, in the deposit types that we're in, will stand the, the, the challenge of, of, of gold price if it comes back down. But I, I think with the, 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 the challenges of the financial crisis of the pandemic not just the emotion but the financial and the printing press that's been happening globally gold's got more more days to shine it's going a lot higher and i think silver is too 
but I'm not, I don't, if I had that crystal ball, I wouldn't need to talk to you, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'd still want to talk to you. Well, no, I know. I, I, yeah. We would be doing it over a beer instead of over, <laughs> over a pod. Yeah, exactly. Or, or two. Um, raising, raising money. Um, how's, how it, we've done a lot of shows. Um, I've done a lot of shows. I've spoken with people and, uh, some industries, it's really, really easy. Some it's hard. Some it's, if you're a good company in a industry that's getting hit, then you can still find it. Um, you started out wanting to raise this much and you got that much. How, uh, how did that go? Um, I've got a great shareholder base. Last year was a tough year for us. And uh, I had guys step up and bought the stock and fit us it up and, and, and said, go do what you need to do to get that da data from Kinross. And we did. And then once we saw it was there, we started to communicate that out to the market. The market started to pay attention. Um, had some really good support out of Quebec. The Quebec brokers understand mining. Okay. Even though we can't offer flow through, they understood our business. And so I said to them, I said, look, this was in February. I turned to Paul, at our Paul Foreign Azari, one of our drinks. I said, look, I said, I think we need to start an AIF and get ready for a prospectus. He said, why? And I, COVID hadn't even happened. I said, well, we just went through a pretty challenging 2019 and we need to differentiate ourselves from the other 1900 junior companies. And if we can offer a, a prospectus offering so there's free trading, that differentiates us from the other 1,850 that haven't done that because they, have, they can only offer four month old paper. So how can we make sure that we're being able to access capital in an efficient manner? Right. The second thing I did was I talked to some of our, our, our brokers who were really supportive in, in, in Quebec and said, you know, I'm considering filing an AIF. Would, would, do, you, do you think a prospectus offering would make a difference? And I said, well, nobody ever translates into French. We never get a chance to play. I said, well, I'm going to recognize and acknowledge your support for me. I'm going to translate. So we did the translation. Those guys gave us $5 million in orders. Like, wow. Like that was the secret sauce for us. Yeah. Like that they stepped up. If you do French, I'm good for a million. I don't even have to climb, call my clients. I got a standing order for a million. Like that type of thing. I didn't even like boggle me. Uh, we I, got, had, I got goosebumps. I, it, it was I said to one guy, I said, I can't wait to come to Montreal because we're going to go and have a nice meal. But just shake your hand. Like it's, I, I'm, just, I'm sitting here shaking. It was awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So we were going back and forth with the bankers. And we had different guys trying to position themselves. And yeah. they'll overnight market it. Or we'll just do a, a, you know, we'll do a broker deal. Or maybe we'll do a small bot deal. And I said to the one, the banker at, at Deacon, Steve Delaney. And I said, look, Steve, I said, I know. I'm good for it. Like, I don't want to sound arrogant. I said, I, I need your letterhead. I need, I need broker support. I can't do a prospectus with a brokers. He says, let me take it to my community. Index. He says, yeah, we're, we're, we're very comfortable with our relationships. We had set up calls with them. The, he knew he had some interest from institutions he said, yeah, we, we, we're comfortable. That was three and a half million. I said, good, let's go. We announced it after the market and but in a half hour, he says, well, we're getting tremendous feedback. Like, would you take an upsize? I said, how, how, how do we do this? Like, I was new. Yeah. I've always been an investor. I was the first time being the decision maker on this. Right. And we ended up doing, upsizing it to $7 million with a green shoe of 15%. We, took, we closed $8.1 And there was north of $16 million in the order book. There's an audience. Like, Q Agro at Revival, also in Idaho. First class, love the guy. We were talking back and forth. I said, Q, you got to go. Because Steve Delaney on the Friday before said, I don't know if we're going to do business together, but you got to go next week. The window's open. Take it. Right. So I, I communicated to Hugh. I said, look, Q, the window's open. And he just did a bot deal with BMO, announced 10 million, just closed 13 million. But guy, I, I think of I, like Hugh, he's Captain Idaho. We're Idaho champion, but he's Captain Idaho. He is so supportive of our industry. And he brings all the different juniors together and makes sure that we understand what's happening so we can be supportive of each other. That's the type of community you want to work in. And, uh, and yeah, we're competitors. Yeah, we're, we're chasing the same asset in the same jurisdiction, same type of geology. But we all have to be good citizens, and we have to be good to each other before we can be good to others. And so I think that's part of Idaho that makes it special, too. Well, Jonathan, I, I, don't, know, I don't know what else to say other than this has been the uh, – there's been lessons, just valuable, valuable lessons that transcends mining or – 
technology or whatever industry uh, that happens to be on the Canadian Securities Exchange, um, you know, we thank you not only for your listing and for being a great corporate citizen and supporter, but also for passing down your, your knowledge with your, with your honesty. And it's, I like seeing when, when good things happen and you get good things coming back. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of negativity in this world and it doesn't have to, the focus doesn't have to be on that. It, it's and, easy to focus on the negative and, and there's so much positive totally. that's going on. And I, I, I so appreciative to be on the CSC. Like I've had some U S investors say, why are you on the CSC? You know, I said, they understand what is ch the challenge of being an entrepreneur. Like I, the first time I went out to the Cambridge house, we got listed in September of 2018 and it had a booth in January of 2019. Yeah. And, and Neil calls me and then you called me and say, Oh, you're going to be in Vancouver. We want to set up some meetings. So I, I, and then I got a speaking slot and then you guys paid for a BTV ad. Like you actually, <laughs> for, for us, it's, it's not just cost, it's a commitment. And we see the commitment from, from even the fact that we're doing this interview right now, like the CSE gets the, the challenges we face. And, and, and as an industry that has suffered, to find capital, to be able to see an exchange that's supporting our initiatives to allow us to tap the capital. Like I when in January, I had just cleared out a block of stock at three and a half cents, December 27th. And I'm like, now how am I going to finance this thing? I was writing checks personally for stuff. And my chairman was doing the same. Like I was like, okay, like I can't keep doing this. I got, I got a family. I got I made a, a significant amount of money into this deal. I believe in it, but the market's got to, we got to see a change in the market. Right. To then all of a sudden see a little bit of momentum and, and, and people believing what we had and believing the people. Because I, I think about investing, it's 98% of my investments are people. Because yeah. good people can take a mediocre asset, use it as currency to get a better asset. A, a mediocre team can ruin the best asset in the world. I always yeah. back people. And so for me, I was seeing my shareholders believe in what we were doing, which gave me greater comfort to be able to go out and be aggressive and go and get the deal done with Kinross for the data at Champaign to go and buy more ground at Champaign to go and stake and make the commitment. So even though we were dealing with the pandemic to be able to come back and, and circle around and say, we have something pretty special here. And and the market's now starting to recognize that and gold's starting to get an uptick and silver's getting an uptick. And, and, and how, how, how can we position ourselves to be at the front end of that? So right. in January, I would never believe that we would have closed an $8.1 million. I was looking for two. Because two, two, we can make meaningful damage in the field. Right. But eight, we got two drill programs. We're going to drill both our projects. You know, the ultimate truth serum is the drill bit. But we know we're going to hit because we've already been at Banner. We went 19 for 19. And I, we got a gold deposit northwest and a gold deposit southwest. So it's just, let's put the pearls on the string. At Champagne, we know that there's gold and silver there because Mima was a producer there. And we know that they left ounces in the ground. So now it's our job to find out how many ounces were left and how many we can find on our, on our own. So right. we're excited about what 2020 has to offer. And we think that it's just the start of great things. Well, we want to be uh, with you. We support you. And we thank you for your continued listing. And uh, we wish you and your family and all the workers in the community in Idaho um, all the best. And when, when this thing uh, lightens up, uh, you and I are due for, for a pint. We should find a patio. <laughs> <laughs> and I look forward to it. Uh, this has been your host, Barrington Miller, with the Canadian Securities Exchange. I've been here with Jonathan Buick from Idaho Champion, ticker I-T-K-O. And this is Mining Monday. Thank, Thank you, you Barrington. Much. Good to see you. Look forward to seeing you in person. Sorry, before I forget, if you like it, uh, click like below. Don't forget to subscribe to csc underscore tv as well you can find us at www.thecsc.com we're also on facebook and instagram and twitter and all of those other media outlets all right thank you very Perfect. much cheers thank you cheers. all the best